Hi, my name is Itamar Turner-Traring, and I'm going to be talking about Phil, uh, Phil, a Python memory profiler, which is specifically designed for data science and scientific computing. Uh, and you can find more about what I do at pythonspeed.com. I do training and also uh, create Python-related educational products and more. So the, the problem that Phil is intended to address is high memory usage. Um, and high memory usage is actually in many ways a more difficult problem than high CPU usage. If you think about what happens when you run out of CPU, then your program will eventually complete. It takes a while, it's slow, it might take, you might end up paying more for your uh, virtual machine in the cloud, but your program will eventually finish. If, however, your program runs out of memory, your program is going to crash. Sometimes it'll just lock your computer up so badly you'll have to reboot it, or sometimes your program will just seg fault. Uh, but you not enough memory means your program cannot finish. And so you can solve these sort of problems often just by adding more resources. So you can add more CPU, you can add more memory to your computer. And the, the problem here is that adding memory is actually much more expensive. Uh, CPU is cheap, memory is expensive. And just to sort of demonstrate uh, this in the real world, if you think about your computer, your computer spends much of its time idle. Uh, much of the time, your computer's CPU is running at like 1%. If you think about your memory usage, it, like a, a, it is quite common for like your laptop to be using 50% of its memory, three quarters of its memory. And the reason is it's just it's more expensive to get enough memory that you don't just keep hitting the limit. And so if you have too much memory usage and it's expensive to just buy more RAM, the next thing you want to do is reduce your memory usage. And it turns out there are different ways you might want to uh, think of, like different domains have different issues with memory usage and therefore require different tools for measuring memory usage. So if you're running a server, let's say a web application, high memory usage is quite often due to leaks. Uh, handling a web request doesn't take that much memory. But if you have a memory leak, Basically, over time, your memory usage is going to increase, increase, and increase, and increase, and increase, and increase, and eventually you're going to run out of memory. And so if you're trying to reduce memory usage in this sort of application, you want a tool that will help you find memory leaks so that you can fix them. However, if you're doing data processing, if you're doing some sort of scientific computing pipeline, if you're doing a data science pipeline, uh, the issue with memory usage is that you're processing data and a lot of it. And so Basically, you're loading some data, doing some stuff with it. And so instead of this sort of slowly growing memory usage, you get these spikes in memory usage when you like load in a chunk of data and do something that uses a lot of memory, and then it drops down, and then you have another spike. So it's lumpy, it's spiky. And the bottleneck here is the point in time where you're using the most memory usage, the peak, uh, the high watermark. And if you can reduce that, then your program will use less memory. And so your goal your t is to find that peak you need a profiler that will find that peak for you. And so existing tools are not really great at this. Uh, the memory profiler, profiler, uh, sort of a generic name, it's pretty decent at finding memory leaks, but it's very annoying to use to, to find uh, peak memory usage. Uh, Trace malloc, which is actually built into Python, uh, is problematic in a different dimension where uh, if you're doing data science or scientific computing, you're using a lot of C libraries, maybe Fortran libraries, Cython, um, maybe Julia or Rust. And most of these libraries are not using Python's uh, memory allocation APIs, which from which point on trace malloc can't see them at all. Like trace malloc only knows about Python's memory. Uh, and so trace malloc just won't help you find uh, memory usage with those third party libraries. And so this is why I've created a new profiler, uh, Phil. Uh, and so here's an example code that some example code I'm going to be profiling. And it's just this sort of really boring NumPy code that generate that allocates a bunch of arrays. Uh, and if you sort of manually try to read through the code, you'd be able to figure out like at what particular point in time the peak memory usage is and how much memory is being used. Uh, but you know, this is a very simple example, and in a realistic program, it's just quite difficult to figure out what the peak moment in time is, let alone, let alone where all the memory usage is coming from. So if you have a program uh, and you want to profile that with field, um, if it's just a full program you want to run, if you, you want to profile, you can do field profile run. 
uh, your program. You can pass command line arguments if you want. And it'll profile it for you. Uh, there's also Jupyter support, uh, which requires a couple of steps, but uh, it'll be the results will be embedded inside your Jupyter notebook. So you can actually profile code in your notebook. And then eventually you get a result. And the result is uh, an interactive graph. So you can see as I move my mouse around, you get different information. And it shows you memory usage at the peak, at the high watermark, at the moment in time when your program is using the most memory. So this example program I showed you a couple of slides ago, at peak was using about 570 megabytes of RAM. And what you're seeing here is a uh, flame graph. And so the width of the uh, line it shows you what percentage. So if it's the full screen, it's 100%. Uh, this one is about 70%, and the, the, the colors also line up with uh, what percentage of memory is using. Is using. So the redder the, 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 the cell, the more memory it's using. So you can see this is using 70% of the RAM, um, and so it's redder than this part over here, which is using about 28% of the RAM. And what you're seeing here is effectively tracebacks of where the allocation happened. And so you can see that this particular allocation uh, return numpy at zeros, which was in the make big array function, which was called by the main function, line 14, uh, which was called from the point where the program was started at line 16 of the script. And so this particular line of code for, with this traceback allocated 70% of the memory. Uh, you can actually double click on it and then it's actually really a traceback. And so you can see the exact set of lines of code that led to this line of code uh, that generated 70% of the RAM. Uh, and overall, you can see that this uh, particular line over here uh, allocated maybe 14% of the RAM. Um, and you can just sort of see in this graph exactly where all the memory was allocated that was uh, there at the peak moment in time at high watermark for memory usage. And once you know that, you can optimize. In this case, we can see that allocating this array of zeros and make a big array is like 70% of our RAM, so that's where we want to concentrate our optimization. And so the goals for fail are to make it uh, easy to use and understand. Um, I want to have low performance overheads. So you can use the real data. Track memory allocation by arbitrary uh, third-party extensions. So C, C++, Fortran, I want you to be able to profile it and integrate with the tools like Jupyter. And at the moment, it's doing pretty well, these goals. There's more to do, but um, I feel like it's quite useful as is. There's some future work I'd like to do. Uh, it supports multi-threading, but it's doesn't it scales really badly. Um, so I want to do better on that. I want to add multi-processing support. Uh, that's going to take some re-architecture, but it is possible. I have some ideas for improving the UX. Uh, I, I'd like to be able to show you a diff to see how much worse or better different parts of your code are doing on memory allocation. And then I'd like to support things like DAS, where you're running your uh, program on multiple machines at the same time. If you want to find out more, you can go to pythonspeed.com slash fil, F-I-L. Uh, the code's available on GitHub, uh, and you can contact me at itamarsd on Twitter. And thank you.